For the very first time in history, Man City have gone ahead to win the UEFA Super Cup after drawing with Sevilla in the full 90 and it was a 1-1 all draw. But Man City had to come from behind to obviously get them to the levels. It was Yusuf Ed Nyasiri in the 25th minute, obviously putting that ball home. And lastly, in the 63rd minute, Cole Palmer came out and obviously made it level. And that's how Man City went in to obviously really survive this game of football. But it shows you how they're really struggling without Kevin De Bruyne. You know, they never had Kevin De Bruyne, they, had, they never had Bernardo Silva, and that obviously called in for a very automatic struggling, especially in the final third. When they're, build, when they're doing their build-up from <clears throat> the first third of the pitch through the second third of the pitch to the final third of the pitch, they really, really looked good and they really looked well. But the problem came in through when they obviously found themselves in a situation of obviously making or making those line breaking chances creating chances for Haaland that's where things really became hard for Man City but all in all they've shown the winning mentality and they've gone ahead to win this trophy and the big question is how are they going to survive throughout the next four months without Kevin De Bruyne because you'll count the match of September October November and December he might return in January will their title charge be on because if it was Ika Gundog, no one will say it's okay. He only came up through in the final third of the season and he obviously showed his levels and led them to the final. Sorry, led them to winning three trophies because he really put up a very sounding performance in the final band of the season. But for Kevin De Bruyne, he has been a regular in all the performances that Manchester have gone ahead to do. You've seen how much they've gone ahead to win very many games, especially when Kevin De Bruyne is with them. Now, Haaland, remember last season, most of the goals he scored, assists came in from Kevin De Bruyne, or the secondary artists came in from Kevin De Bruyne, and you saw him today struggle a lot on the field of play. And Kovacic <coughs> and Rodri are trying to get that combination, and I believe at all they get that combination, and then Bernardo Silva starts to play ahead of them, because nowadays um, Pep Guardiola has shifted to a 4-2-3-1 system with Kovacic and Rodri playing the double pivot and um, and um, Bernardo Silva all Phil Foden playing ahead of them as a St. Patrick midfielder and they are really looking great. So I think <laughs> the more they play together, the more this guy is going to fit into the team. But obviously they are worries. That's why it is that he's rushing the market to bring in more players that are going to obviously get in. Now, Man City took the five penalties in and guess who were the five players to put those penalties in into the back of the net those who really took those penalties and they never missed any <coughs> it was Erling Haaland who obviously took the first penalty for for Man City and it crossed the line and by the way for Bono who was in between the stitches I think all of the Man City fans were worried because this is the guy that obviously denied um, which team in the semi-finals of the World Cup was it Mm. There is a team where Bono served very many penalties and obviously saw him and saw himself lead his team to the final of sorry to the semi to the semi-finals of the World Cup where they are knocked out by France. But Bono really looked great. Now, Haaland scored his first penalty, then Ocompas came in through and scored his first penalty for Sevilla. Julian Alves came in through and obviously scored his penalty for Man City to make it two. Even Rafa Mi he scored. Then Kovacic scored his penalty for Man City. Ivan Rakitic came in through and obviously scored his. That was 3-3. Jack Willish came in through and scored the fourth penalty. And obviously Montiel came in and scored also the fourth penalty for, for Sevilla. Then Walker came in through and scored his penalty. And then Gudeji went ahead to miss the penalty and they won it by 5-4 meaning that all the five penalties crossed the line and Bono almost saved the penalty of Kyle Walker but it bounced off the ground with power and went into the bottom corner so that's how Man City went ahead to lift the trophy and they're now jubilating to having won the trophy and let me show you a little bit of what went ahead in the stadium where this game of football really went down now <coughs> 
this was Bono denying Grealish um, and Grealish had really gone in for an effort and Bono denied it then in the 24th minute Erin Yassiri opened the score versus Man City to make it one nil for Sevilla then <coughs> then Lamela went in for shot but it was really of target in there for you and in the 49th minute this is another chance that Yusuf Nyasiri went in and obviously Ederson denied him but you saw this guy you're going to see him very many times close to four times he faced the goalkeeper and scored only once even here it was the same guy and really shot not even close to the side net um then some beautiful pass from El Nasri who made a very great run but couldn't control it properly great performance by Sevilla tonight and the Sevilla really put up some good performances and they really got Man City on the break every time and they really wanted then Man City leveled the game but El Nasri really got another chance look at where he was he would have gone ahead to make it count for the team of Sevilla and he couldn't so I think Sevilla had the chances to double their lead, but they couldn't. Erin Haaland, this is the only chance that Erin Haaland got, and obviously the ball deflected off defenders of Sevilla, and it was really blocked. <coughs> then this was a header that Nathan Ake took, and it almost went to the back of the net, and Deno de and Bonho denied him that save. And lastly, they went ahead to celebrate as a team of Manchester City. So that's how it went down at the stadium. And Man City went ahead to lift the league, to lift that trophy. Now, some stats that you guys never really had a look at. And this is what we have for you. 23 shots <laughs> by Man City. 8 shots by Sevilla. 7 shots on target by Man City. It shows you that they really lacked what you call composure in the final third the magic of palma phil foden and uh, <coughs> sorry and jack willish couldn't unlock <coughs> couldn't unlock the, the couldn't unlock the the <clears throat> the pass so he couldn't unlock the back four of Sevilla to obviously create chances for Ring Haaland. Then Sevilla had four shots out of the eight, that was good. Four shots were on target. Half of the targets, half of the shots they had were on target. So it shows you how good they are. 74% ball possession by Man City. You expected that. 26% ball possession, but by Sevilla, but Sevilla looked a better team when it came to transition than Man City. 663 passes completed by Man City and 233 passes completed by Sevilla. 89% ball accuracy by Man City, Kret Gid, and 77% by Sevilla. 5 fouls by Man City, 14 by Sevilla because Sevilla never had the ball alone and he to obviously put in a lot of intensity to obviously outcompete Man City and they forced him to penalties. Zero yellow cards to Man City, three yellow cards to Sevilla, zero red cards for both sides, zero offsides to Man City, three to Sevilla and eight corners to Man City and zero to Sevilla. Now, <coughs> there is another man we are talking about, is Vadio. Vadio has had a very bad debut for me because the goal they concede from a header the way this El Nyasiri guy runs from his behind and obviously fronts himself where the where the flight of the ball was and heads it home leaves a lot of questions into the 86 million pound signing for Manchester City from Albi Leipzig. I don't underrate him. He's really one good defender that you'd like to have at your team. <clears throat> Press resistant. His physicality is really great and he's a very good player when it comes to obviously playing a high line and he can also add a load going forward to the game so i really anticipate that lots of things are really going to happen today and we have to obviously get to where we deserve to be and see how man city are going to act in the coming days but all i know is that they are working in on two or three signings they want lucas paqueta there is this other guy let's see his name here for you that fabricio romano really talked about he's an African guy known as Jeremy Doku, who I saw 
and obviously help them to really bring in more fluidity in their front three after the departure of Riyad Mahrez from the team. So guys, your thoughts on Man City lifting the UEFA Super Cup are welcome in the comment section below. What do you make about how they've gone ahead to play for to watch the game? Because I think they've struggled and if you had to ask me who had the better chances, it was severe, but they lacked a number nine to get of those chances. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later, my Muslim viewers and subscribers. Barak Laufikum.